Today, we're going to talk about basic authentication. If you're a web developer, you're going to run into basic authentication. If you're using somebody's APIs, it's widely used. Generally, you'll log in using basic authentication to get a JSON token, and you'll use the APIs from there. But a lot of big companies use it. We're going to look at today how to use it with PayPal because they're a large company you may run into and they show them how to use it. What's basic authentication? Basic authentication was something that was developed in 1993. Um, you send a username and password using ba in a base 64 string. You know, why do we do it that way? Because that's what mom said and we don't want to make mom angry. So this is how we're going to do it. First, we're going to send a request using Postman just to see what happens. So if I put in the P PayPal API, uh, we're going to send a post request. If you go to authorization, um, Postman has basic auth built in. So I'm going to copy my sandbox. Oh, they're still in here. So I got my sandbox username and password. Sometimes they're referred to as public and private key. Uh, in the body, you're going to want to send a URL encoded. A lot of a lot of APIs do do this. Not everybody does, but a lot of them do stick to this specific thing. Uh, so we want to send it a key value pair, a grant type, and client credentials. Um, <clears throat> most APIs, when you send requests and get back information from them, you're always going to go JSON, but uh, JSON was invented after URL encoding, so we use URL encoding. We have our authorization, we have our URL, we have our request type. We send this off, we are authenticated against the PayPal API. Okay, so what does that look like in code? All right, I just have a basic console application here, so we need an HTTP client. Now we're going to, you can, we're going to do this a basic way. If we're going to reuse this, we're going to set a base address, but we're not going to reuse it. This is just a one-off example. So we're not going to set a base address. We're just going to use our URL in our request. Now, the way C Sharp works, if we want a base 64 encoded string, we have to pass it an array of bytes. So we're going to create our username and password. So let's say we have a string, we'll call it auth. And if you look here, what it's creating is at a base level, we're gonna send basic authentication with a username and a password separated by a semicolon. Now, usually what you'll see is something called string interpolation. So what that means in C-sharp terms is you'll see a dollar sign and then you'll see a string with values that you can pass in here. So instead of having to go username plus password like that, we can use string interpolation, which is why you see this a lot. But all this really means is anything within these squiggly brackets right there, I forget what they're called, uh, is, a, is, a, is a value that we have. So if this was a real application, you'd probably have a username value somewhere, you'd probably have a password value somewhere. Now, this is a lot of extra code. You can you can shorten this down, but I wanna show you what each piece is and what it's doing. So, because a lot of times, you're probably not gonna have these in your file. They're probably gonna be in a config file somewhere that you're gonna go and get. So this is more likely to be a, a command that goes out and grabs that config file. So, we have a string of username and password. But like I said, in order to get a base 64 encoded string, we need a byte array. So we need to convert our string into a byte array. So we're gonna get our bytes, big bytes. Um, this basically just gives us a byte array. Now we need a 64 bit, we need a, we need a base 64 string. So. So we can take our bytes, we can pass it to convert two base 64 string. So these are all the individual steps we're taking to get there. Now we're gonna put these as authorization headers in our requests. So we're gonna say client default headers dot authorization. 
and we're going to pass it because Basic authentication is an agreed upon standard that's been around for a long time. It's generally built in. So we can just say we're going to pass it an authentication header value. It's a type of basic. And here's our base 64 encoded username and password. Now we need, in this case, we need to send it a key value pair telling it what we want. Sometimes when you send a request with basis, basic authentication, you have to pass like, here's what I want to have access to. In this case, we're just telling it we want to we want to get client credentials. See this? Copilot knows what we want. All right, so we're going to pass it a grant type. We're going to pass it client credentials. All right, so we're going to client post async you don't have to use post async. You don't have to use await. You can use dot result on the end of it. But we're going to give it our URL. And we're also going to pass it our URL encoded key values. Now, our auth, we've put as a header in our request. Now we can look at our response. And we can read the response as a string. It's going to give us a JSON value. And then we're going to take a look at our response here. So let's go ahead and run our program. Well, let's save it first. And what we got back, here's our response back, which, uh, you know what, I was going to make it look pretty but we can just look at our postman for the pretty version. So you can see we got back the scope, the access token. This access token is really what you're after when you generally, when you send basic authentication, you're asking for um, a JWT token that you're gonna send for other requests. And this is a lot of times how you, how you do your initial authentication to get your value back. So you can see you're gonna use this code a lot this can be simplified down. I tried to put each file on its own line so you could see, or each command on its own line. I tried to put each line of code on its own line so you could see what each one is doing, but this can definitely be shrunk down into, into uh, less lines of code. But this is how you do basic authentication. You're gonna use this a lot. You're gonna look it up once, copy the code, and then just go back and pull it up whenever you need it until you've done it so many times that you can do it off the top of your head. But I hope that helps. Come back for more.